pe ambaye unasema. Your Excellency, the theme of reconciling with God and men could not be more appropriate for our country. I want to give a testimony that the President, and ascending to the high office, has led this country in forgiveness and reconciliation. Most of us who work around him had great difficulties with that approach. But along the way, he has persuaded us, and we are now aligned, that reconciliation is the way to go for the betterment of this country. <laughs> the President has exercised magnanimity in victory. Against the expectations of many people, who witnessed the persecution that he was subjected to, the harassment, the intimidation, had expected him to go hammer and tongs for his tormentors and persecutors. He shocked all of us when he insisted that he is a Christian, and the Bible has taught him that forgiveness is a calling from God, and he decided to lead this country by giving leadership in forgiveness and matters and consideration. His first appointment on, a set, on being sworn in as president, he shocked all of us. His first appointment was to a man who had made it difficult for him to rise to the presidency. But he was forgiving, he was magnanimous, and that was it. Many people would have expected by now that all those who stood in his path to leadership would be dealt with the way his people were being dealt with. Being arrested, taken to court, being harassed by KRA, but the president decided in accordance with the teachings of the Bible that we need to reconcile this nation. And that is why we have a peaceful country. And Your Excellency, we want to thank you for carrying us along. One example, it is, it is, may look small, but it was very inspiring to those of us who work with the President. The last prayer breakfast here was a very toxic affair, full of tension and hatred. The President today who was Deputy President could not sit on the same table with his boss. And when we were trying to align people around the President, many people around us, we were persuaded that the lady who had removed the chair from where Dr. William Root was supposed to sit should be shown the door. And when the president came to learn of it, he said, no, we must reconcile with the reality that is behind us. That lady who was in protocol should remain there and be promoted. And as we speak today, she works around the president. Again, when the president and his family and their belongings were thrown out of the official residence of the, de of the deputy president in Mombasa, most of us were persuaded that those who had participated in throwing out his belongings should be shown the door. Again, he insisted that should not be the case. So what I'm trying to say is that the new administration is one that is persuaded that we need to reconcile the country. And therefore, we want to plead and persuade all leaders also to reconcile with the truth and the reality. Because even as we reconcile with God and men, we also need to reconcile with the truth. The truth of the matter is that William Ruto is the president of the Republic of Kenya. <laughs> Let everybody also, as we reconcile with God and with men, start by reconciling with the truth. I was very impressed the other day
to see the women rep of Nairobi, Honorable Pasaris, reconciling with the truth in Nairobi that 70% of the people she leads live in the slums. And it would not be wise for her as a leader to oppose a program that is going to remove the people she leads from the slums to dig in it. We are therefore asking everybody, as we reconcile with God and with men, let us also reconcile with truth and reality. Your Excellency, when we were sitting there, you were a bit concerned. Ya kwamba hawa waliongea hapa wame umisa kemani ichongwa kidogo. But your Excellency, you and I also need to reconcile with the kemani ichongwa because he has not been very nice to us. You know, kemani ichongwa was in Alliance High School. Any time we have an occasion and he is given an opportunity to speak, because the president and I were in some schools who many people don't want to mention or think about, he tries to intimidate the president and I, despite the fact that we are seniors, that he was in Alliance High School. Lakini sasa wewe dugu yangu kimani ichoma. Hata kama ulikuwa Alliance na mimi sikuwa huko, huniashimu kidogo. Kwa sababu, you alliance yako yo. They say that the people from Alliance boys and girls are top. Mimi ni ingia you alliance yako alliance girls. Nika changanya mtoto ya mwenyewe, nikaweka box, ni bibi yangu leo. So, between me and these guys who went to Alliance, who is more superior? <laughs> na, na ziku weka a box beke yake, for the last 35 years, ako kwa hiyo box. Finally, your Excellency, before I call you, I want to commend the choir. Ele ya Osoro. So, Osoro na yu timu yako, tukimaliza munione nyuma ya hema. But not the bigger team, that one, yu badu. Yu iko, iko chini kidogo, so Osoro. I'll talk to Pastor Dokas. We consider whether during our wedding anniversary, you can come and perform. Lakini, mjumbe wetu moja hapo, alikuwa na hitu wakagushia, ameniangusha. Alikuwa hana uniform. <laughs> Mina juwa uchagusi likuwa ngumu, lakini huja ishiwa hiyo kiasi. So we unione mwisho wa mwesi ni kupanga uniform. So that uh, you don't embarrass the people of Nyeri. So your Excellency, we, we, we are happy today. It's a happy moment for the country. With the era of reconciliation and forgiveness that you have led us as our leader. And all of us are persuaded and we want to move you to the di that direction. I therefore request everyone to be upstanding as you help me to usher in the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruto. Your Excellency. Thank you very much for the Asante Sana, Bwana Deputy President. Please, let's take our seats. Thank you very much. Um, All my good friends and leaders from Kenya, our brother, um, Lord Hastings, and fellow Kenyans, good morning. Hamjambo. Jambo. 